Bloody crashed. Crash was doing my test. <laughs> Jesus, I've got the handcuffs. Oh, Christ. Welcome, welcome all to another video from Oscar Cooper. This is the top five ARPGs that aren't Diablo 4, okay? I've done that because I have featured Diablo 4 on the channel way too much. It's everywhere in the early stages. So this is to explore the other options. Now, there are some rules. The game has to feature local online co-op gameplay so that's pillars of eternity out of the window also they can't be turn-based otherwise that would be the divinity original sin one and two would just dominate the list i also want to make double sure everyone understands what i mean when i say arpg that stands for action role-playing game now you might think that covers just about every game ever made well it's to do with the top down i or asymmetric where you're using hotkeys gathering loot you guys know the deal we're starting with inquisitor Marta. Now, this is a very interesting one because i sort of peddled this game out when it was first released on pc and on console because i'm a big fan of warhammer and 40k and this kind of fired that bullet directly into the target because it is a diablo clone but it also features some amazing range gunplay so if you're not aware that the 40k universe is all about the warhammer futurists so it's got marines in it and it's got chaos in it and it, i'm very interested in the clash of those two laws and of course this game having uh, an a local online co-op feature now th there's this fifth on the list for a reason and you probably all know why it's a supporting addition when it comes to adding that extra player so you can see here that you have a set class you are basically a helper you are brought in you don't have your own stats you don't have your own infantry and that's one of the things that has put it slightly down on the list but i will say this well done to the developers for adding it. It's available as local co-op both on PC and PlayStation 4. And another thing is this game has had a lot done to it. It was released on launch, barely crawling out of the gate. And it is now a stunning, beautiful ARPG that is on a par with everything else on this list. However, when it comes to the local co-op, it falls down because you're not setting a profile up. This person really is a tackle. It's also got quite a unique control mechanism as you can rotate that camera around. Hardly any of the games on this list allow you to do that and I love that. I like to be able to see the fight from another angle but the player that's joined you doesn't have that ability. And that just adds to the redundantness of this two player mode. But I wanna be clear at saying, this game is vastly improved from launch and having someone else in with you is not bad at all. It's a hell of a lot of fun to be fair. And the individual that came on board for this was a very fast melee focused assassin. So it really worked well with me and my range shield gunplay. Every single one of these games is going to be loot mental. So that's one of the major selling points and traits for a true ARPG is that it's loot mental and that loot's coming off everything. You can change your toe caps or your fingerless gloves. It's crazy. And this really does hit home that capability of being able to find rare stuff, cool stuff. And another thing, and loads of other games don't do this when it comes to Warhammer 40K, this features all of the cool guns. So heavy lasers, heavy bolters, all really cool swords and the shields, and they've all got emblems on them, etc. It's lavish to hell how well handled the visuals are when it comes to the character model itself. You've also got upgrades on different visuals with the armors, etc. Because you're an inquisitor, kind of no holes barred when it comes so the outlandish beauty of the armor that you can don in this game. The other thing that I haven't shown in this footage is that developers added two new races, not just races, the damn Eldar and Tyranid. That's huge. If you, if you know the lore, then those races are awesome. Tyranids are almost like the Geiger alien. They come at you and hoard. It doesn't change the gameplay model that much, but it certainly throws a spanner in the works and gives you some much needed variety with what sometimes can be a little bit of a mundane sort of enemy conveyor belt. Bosses are done really well and they're kept in canon and they're really good story based bosses. This is a Chaos Dreadnought and a goddamn Chaos Lord. It's such a cool idea. They've got all the armors right and the noises and the voices. So 
I do love this game a lot. Just be aware that it's a, a when it comes to the two player, it's a little bit of a gimmick, but the one player campaign is extremely strong. If it's the first time you've seen this game, have a good look. Warhammer Inquisitor Marta. Gauntlet's an ARPG, is it, Coop? Well, just. Arrowhead Studios revamped the older retro game. If you don't know, Gauntlet was one of the first top-down multiplayer sort of horde, crazy amount of enemies on screen, most class-based shooter. You could choose characters, and you had this wealth of levels. That was one of the things that it boasted was thousands of different level combinations, but they were all sort of a little bit templated. Anyway, the Arrowhead Studios guys have injected enough into this game model to warrant it to be an ARPG. Yes, you do have a character selection. Yes, you do have a different loadouts and you do have different specials that you can purchase with in-game money. I was very impressed with the meta game behind this gauntlet port. It is actually very good. Four player online and two player online, obviously. And does it kick off at all? Well, holy hell. Do what it does. It isn't a looter ARPG because nothing drops. You don't have to worry about collecting stuff. You do have to worry about dying, obviously, and you have to make sure that your health is at full capacity. This is a very good looking game and it's got a bit of age behind it now, but it's extremely well made. All the characters are vastly different. You've got stuff like the wizard and the barbarian, and I do love its little set pieces. Elf needs food. It isn't going to offer the depth of infantry management that you see in a lot of the AAA ARPGs out on the market at the moment. But I think that this has got a lot of appeal because of its price, because of the people that made it, and because of its heritage. Gauntlet was an awesome franchise, and it's really cool to see this game come out and actually grab the franchise with both hands in regards to subject matter and play style, but inject this really cool ARPG meta mechanic, which involves amazing specials, swapping stuff in and out, support classes, just being a general badass. <laughs> It's also nice and hard and has a really cool continue mechanic. If you look to the top right of the screen, you'll see this skull coins. You get rewarded skull coins at incremental points on sort of good performance on gameplay. I'm assuming that's what it is because I always look up and think, oh, thank God I've got one. They're your continues. And what happens is if you run out of them, then you just, you run out of game, but you both share them. So there's really tense moments where someone is trying to get the new skull coin to get you back into the game. It works well and Holy crap is this game busy. I saw not a single ounce of performance issues ever since day one with this game. I cannot say that about Inquisitor Marta. It also handles mid-level bosses really well, end of stage bosses, giving you loads of variety, massive giant spiders. It hasn't half assed any of that at all. So Gauntlet isn't available physical, I don't think. It's available on the PlayStation Network currently. It is up to four player. It's got a fantastic offline two player mode and the single player campaign is extremely enjoyable. I'm about to starve here. By the age of Sigma, Sigma, Sigma's the new sort of canon law that's written for a lot of the original Warhammer material, so everybody is very interested in that. But this is Chaos Bane, so this is back to Warhammer, but again, we have a lot of quality here. This is AAA, so this one came out all singing, all dancing, working, <laughs> amazing, and having a really crisp two player, three player, and four player offline couch co op modes. This one is really good and reviewed by me in full about four months ago. Funny enough, the video is about to hit 10,000 views, it's not got a single dislike on it. That blew my mind a bit because statistically, it should have 
done by now. I, I, it's not that great a review. <laughs> it's not that great a review. I think it just goes to show how satisfied people are with this game. There was a lot of rumours before it came out, and it came out very close to Inquisitor Marta. Well, not that close, but they're two very different sets of Warhammer lore, and this one really does thrive on the old school stuff with the elves and that cool little dwarf with his axes. It's very cool, and it's slick, looks beautiful, performs fantastically. Everything is here when it comes to flashy hotkey moves and just hordes and hordes and hordes of enemies. <laughs> Progression is key to a good ARPG, and this lays down the breadcrumbs of an upgraded hotkey move or a new weapon drop or a cool new piece of armor. It paces that absolutely perfectly, and it's got a really cool detailed campaign with loads of NCPs, not too much dialogue, a pretty cool story, and some amazing locations. I haven't done this game justice with the footage and the locations because they're beautiful. Now it does do infantry management extremely well. It has an advantage because this is a newer ARPG, so a lot of the complaints and quality of life issues that we see in games like Diablo 4 have been adjusted here. One of them is that the infantry management system does not need the other player to be stationary, it doesn't disturb them, it's a fantastic mechanism. It allows you to go through your stuff and just tag along. You don't have to even touch the controller in regards to gameplay, you can focus on your infantry and Join when you're ready. Having access to this lore and the chaos and the bosses and some of the amazing creature design that we see in Warhammer with that particular race is very much taken advantage of here. As the name suggests, it is just chaos through and through, but you've got a wealth of rich material to work with here when it comes to that stuff and they do deliver you've got a nurgle boss you've got chaos demons it's it's very good one of the things that does miff me a little bit is the aesthetics when it comes to the warrior class i'll talk about that in a second range is handled very well and i like the idea that you can swap in and out a huge amount of hotkey specials and they all individually upgrade themselves the more you use them i like that idea i often gravitate to certain moves and i want to see those moves explored and powered up because i'm used to their mechanics it does have an issue however with pulling someone of lower rank into your game and what I do with this is I have two characters a single player character that's obviously quite high rank that I get on with when people run around and then of course I've got my low level characters that I can join into their games if someone at rank 7 comes walking into your 25 game they're a not going to be able to kill anything and b not be able to benefit from the applicable loot however you will rank them up massively quickly that is one of the things but they will be completely useless it also hides the hotkey management system for the second player behind a triangle button i i didn't clock that first of all put some stuff in the comments if you need help with that but the amending of the different hotkey lineups can be adjusted for player two but I want to go on record as saying I'm very passionate about this game. I'm going to keep my eye on it. It works fantastically. It is probably one of my favourite go-to ARPGs. That'll be why you put it on the list, Coop. Yeah. So next up we have Darksiders Genesis. Relatively new IP set in the canon of the Darksiders games. You don't really need to know much about them to enjoy this and it's got nothing to do in regards to gameplay models with those previous games they were third person action role-playing games this is very much the ARPG format now it does have a split screen mode so it's not it's the first ARPG on this list that actually splits the screen I do and don't like this I actually do like it because it means that you're monstrously autonomous ie you can get on with your own thing you do not have to you are not tethered and that's quite liberating but it also means that your screen is reduced in size by 50% which can be an issue sometimes There's only two characters, War and the gun guy, let's call him. He's Strife, sorry, and Range and Close Quarters Melee. They both have the same hit points, I think. I think War might have a bit more, but 
Oh, it's amazing. He's got a triangle and square button, hard, fast attacks. He's got these big special slams. He's got all kinds of wicked dodges. He's even got a block. Then it comes to Strife. Strife's got an amazing build, shotgun, almost special on the R buttons, and can have ammunition swapped in and out. You've also got that cool glide mechanic. And as you can see, the game really loves dramatic set pieces it really loves them like you're always in a cool dramatic staircase or above some burning lava etc it does very well on the production level it also does very well on its meta game when it comes to perks mechanics unlocks and different areas to take your character into vilgram is still there and he is your trader but there's a very cool system with the creature cause so you would have seen a purple drop and it comes from a particular enemy type and you can actually farm bosses or bigger mid-level bosses or even ground level grunts for their cause because they have different traits and abilities it's a really cool idea and you see it in a lot of other games but you are constantly swapping them in and out and opening different trees to give you access to different move sets etc it's very good with the hub as well. I really love interesting characters to interact with when it comes to leveling up your character or, or buying cool perks and stuff. This does not hold back with such a high level of production, both in and out of the player hub. I don't even want to know how you got these. We've also got huge amounts of environments to explore. The map is actually pretty much open world and you can go where you want and find different secrets at your own pace. It also has a horse in it. You are apocalyptic horseman obviously and with a click of the two buttons you transfer onto your horse for quicker traversal around larger map areas. One of the things that is going to get some people's goat is that it loves to make you platform and I know ARPGs aren't really supposed to do that and if they do it's only so that it spices up the otherwise mundane gameplay this is and isn't welcomed some people are going to have issues with it it's difficult to work out the angles when you're on that isometric playing field but it's there and it does you know, if you know what you're doing and you've had that bit before you can just get them out of the way but holy crap when this game kicks off does it kick off No friendly fire means you can just go balls to the wall with everything. What does happen sometimes is that you get an instigated God of War quick time event on certain enemies to finish them off. And the camera will unfocus a lot of the stuff in the foreground and background. It kind of gets itself in a bit of a mess. I spoke about that before. I have also reviewed this game in full before and it's been on two lists. So Naughty Old Coop. That's a third repeat for it, but totally, you can't have an ARPG list without having Darksiders Genesis in it. <laughs> difficulty wise, it's pitched pretty perfectly and you do get the option to increase the difficulty on a run to increase the amount of loot drops, etc. Every level wants to be played through again because of this core system and you also get an option to amp up the difficulty prior to the level to see what you can get out of it. I like that idea. There's a certain amount of grind in there. An ARPG without a little bit of grind isn't really an ARPG, agreed? So Darksiders Genesis, available physical and digital. There's also a limited edition, still books, everything you can go mental with this one. I'm going to stick with it because I think they will inject some cool content. THQ Nordic always look after their user base and they have a very good history of some amazing AAA games. So this one is no exception to the rule. And get yourself ready for number one because I think there's going to be controversies. Okay, let me crack the proverbial knuckles and start my pitch for Children of Mortar being the best ARPG available on the PlayStation 4. Now, just <laughs> let's put that in perspective a minute, Coop. It's beaten every single one of these games previously. It's an indie game. It's bloody tiny. I don't even think this game's a gig. And it's come out of no. It hasn't really come out of nowhere, but it's made an impact on me and my channel and my gameplay calendar so massively that it's impossible to ignore. So we need to start with its gameplay model. This isn't a traditional ARPG. This sits more in the roguelike camp than it does 
a normal game. So what I mean is you have one chance at doing the run at, of the dungeon and getting to the last boss and the dungeons will be in three sections. That's a cool idea because the risk becomes extremely high. Now one of the things that miffs me about the Diablo 4 is that it's just too damn easy or you can make it too damn easy. Even on the toughest, toughest difficulty, I don't see the level of teamwork, communication and specials combinations that I see in Children of Mortar. It's absolutely stunning. And these two characters I'm playing with are new. I'm leveling them up in some of the older levels because I want to have them at the front line with my high level characters. And that in itself is a genius idea. Character roster itself is a family and you start with two, maybe three, and I now unlocked all of them and they are vastly, vastly different. And that's one of the selling points for a good ARPG is that the character classes and move sets are different enough to warrant another playthrough or for you to be interested enough in them to develop them independently. As you can see, the game does stick to some of the rules. You've got the temporary buffs that you can find in and around, but there's no loot and no ranked loot drops whatsoever. You have a standard weapon for each of your characters, but, and look at that spin move, you have the most amazing skill tree ever and hock key system ever that's integrated with the rank of that character. The more you play with them, the cooler they get. The game also makes you use one profile. So the person that's playing with me here is a guest using my character roster, but everything they do with this character counts to the leveling system. So it's such a cool, it's almost like having a deck, you know, that you can maintain yourself or loan out to someone who wants to play with you, but all of that work doesn't go to waste at all. You also have some amazing art here. The sound and movements and designs on all the specials right down to the pixel, even the swing of the ax or the little combustible flames are beautiful. It sounds and looks stunning this game. The perks and buff system is completely borrowed from roguelikes, so they stack and they're random. And I know I, I really would like to see a sheet of all of them because I'm still getting little one-off buffs and perks and additions to my specials in a run that I've never seen before. And you'll see there's a symbol to the left above my character's stats, which is one that I've just found on the fly and it is now there permanently. When things start to join up in regards to these perks, you see some really mad moves come out and that's that's another hook is that it still surprises me I'm probably about 120 hours in it still surprises me to this day what I can achieve on a run what I can find and how vastly I can change things within my characters move set and design traps and little nuances within the maps that you can hoard enemies into and of course that lovely element of procedural generation with enemy placement and map design. Obviously they're tiles that are just rotated around, you're not going to see any majorly crazy procedural generation when it comes to the map layout but you never ever ever get the same game twice and you could always walk around the corner and have a colossal horde of enemies come at you that just weren't there on the previous playthrough even down to a little mini boss etc. Having someone else with you during a playthrough obviously gives you a revive mechanic and that can be quite daunting not to have when you play on your own. But if you're a fan of roguelikes and if you're a fan of extremely hard retro games, you are going to totally have so much fun playing this on your own because the odds are stacked against you but that doesn't matter because if you time your specials right use your abilities correctly and work the environment against the enemy this game will pay off it also has got story nuggets and little juicy things to find within the procedurally generated maps that wouldn't normally be there, secret stuff that you can take back to the house, and look at that leveling animation with the eagle. Oh man, this is a perfect ARPG, people. 
The skill tree is so cool because you get to another rung of that ladder and massive things happen to the way that your character plays. Massive. You might even get an old fire mode. You might have a huge, big special that comes out. You can see the three hotkeys down at the bottom there. And there's a rage meter on the triggers, which sends your character completely mental. You might be watching this as, as a newbie and think, what the hell is he talking about? This won my game of the year for 2019. It's one of the best couch co-op games available on the market and it's indie and it's cheap and it's available physical and it's available on the Switch. Children of Mortar will go down in history as being an absolutely epic triumph in this genre. So ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. I'll see you then!